Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to cover how to create routes in Bottle. So for any web application, routes are essential because the whole point is you put up a server somewhere on the web, someone will request a URL and then they get back something returned from your server. So a web application without routes is useless. So that's why this is the first video I want to go into uh, more specifics with bottles. So we have to start with routes before we can do anything else. And routes are very easy to use. You don't have to use regular expressions. You just put exactly what you want the route to be and bottle will take care of the rest. The routing system is very similar to Flask if you've used that. So to get started, I need to import bottle. I already have bottle installed on my machine from bottle. Import two things. I'm importing route and run. And then I just need to tell the Python interpreter to run the server if I call it directly. And I'll put this in debug mode and I'll add the reloader as well. So first, let me create a very simple route. I'll call this route, uh, route. how about that? Not the most creative name, but I'll call it route. So first you need the route decorator. So a dollar, or, or the at sign and then route, followed by the actual location of the route. In this case, it's going to be route, but it can be anything you want. It can be a name, Anthony, it can be hello, it can be page, be login let's do login actually like that one so login is the route so the decorator needs to have the location of the route and then the function below it will actually have the code that gets executed whenever this route is called and by convention you can name your function and name is the the same as the route name so all I need to do in this login function is return on the login page and that's it so this should be available to me let me start up my server so Python routing okay it's listing on 8080 which I should have open here so if I go here I get a 404 because this route isn't defined I don't have anything on the index but if I go to login I see that I'm on the login page. If I change this to something else, hello, I also get a 404. Because I only have this one route set up, only this page will return something. So let me set up another route. I'll say this one is register. And just like the one above, I'll name the function the same thing. And I'll return on the register page. All right, so my server restarted because I have reloader on. So if I go to register, I see that I'm on the register page. And then login is still there, but nothing else is defined. L is not defined, index not defined. All right, so this is great for static routes where you have all the information that you want to make available to the user. So the exact path that the user is going to request is something that you know ahead of time. But oftentimes these routes need to be dynamic, meaning the user can pass in not only something that you know ahead of time, but some dynamic data that can go along with it. So an example would be you have a website with articles and your route can be something like article slash and then a name of an article or an ID of an article. And from that route, you can take the ID of the article or the name of the article, and then you can go into the database and retrieve that article and return it to the user. That way you don't have to make a route for every single possible article that's on your site. Instead, you make one that's dynamic and then you take that dynamic part and use it to figure out what to display to the user. So. Going along with articles, I'll create a route called article. And then for the dynamic part, you just need to have the 
variable just like this. So I'll say ID. So you use the uh, less than symbol, the name of the variable, and the greater than symbol. I'm sure these have other names, but I can't think of them right now. But just like that. And then the function that's below the decorator route, you need to pass in uh, that variable as an argument. So I'll call this article, and it has to have this ID. So these will match up perfectly. So if I had more dynamic parts to it, I have more parameters for this function. So I have article and ID, and I'll say you are viewing article, and then I'll add an ID. And that's it. Well, actually, no, that's not it. I want to close out the header tag. All right, so let's see, it just restarted. So now I'll go to Article 5. You are viewing Article 5. Article 59. You are viewing Article 59. Uh, 27,387. You are viewing article 27,387. And typically in this case, you take this uh, argument that's passed in and you go retrieve something from your database. But since there's no database set up here, um, in this simple example, you just uh, kind of mirror it back. But in a real life example, you'd actually do something more substantial with that argument that gets passed in. So if I had a thousand articles instead of having this over and over copied a thousand times, I only need this one route. And if I do this, if I just go to article, it's not found because I don't actually have just the article route set up. Article needs to be combined with an ID. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're doing this. And if you want to have more than one dynamic part, let's say um, page and then this page will have an ID and a name. Probably not the most realistic example, but that's what I'm going to use here. So it needs to take ID and name as parameters. And then I'll just put more text. You are viewing page and then ID with a name of name. All right, so let me save that. Server should restart. Okay. So now I'll go to page and I'll say ID 10 and name uh, hello. So viewing page 10 with the name of hello, I can do page 20. I can do intro and it's the same thing. So you can have as many of these uh, variables as you want in your route. And just like the article is not defined above, simply page by itself is not defined. So there's one more thing I want to show, and that is methods. So the typical HTTP methods that are used in any web app are get, post, and then sometimes put, delete, and uh, patch. So those five. You could use other ones, but typically it's those fives. And in most cases, it's just git and post. So all these are gits by default. But if you want it uh, a post and set, I'll say post it is the uh, path that I'm going to specify. I just need to pass in a method as well as a method along with the path for the route. So method in this case will be post. And I'll say post it. It's not taking in any value. So save that and server restarts. Let's go to post it. And it gives me an error 405 method not allowed. It's telling me that I can't do a git request, which is the request that gets called when you type in a URL in your browser, it's always a git request. I can't do that here because it only allows post requests. 
So if I change this to git, save it, wait for my server to restart, and then refresh, now it lets me do it. But of course, it's not the post request anymore, it's just a git. So I'll change that to post and I'll refresh. And once again, it says I can't do a git request here because it only allows post it. And I don't think I have, do I have it set up? I have Postman set up. So just to demonstrate, I'm gonna use Postman to send a post request because I can't do it through the browser. So let me just clear everything out. And all right, so the URL is going to be 127.0.01, port is 8080, and then post it. So if I send this, it gives me the same page. Uh, I can't see it as well as I saw on the other page because it's just returning the raw HTML, but you should get the idea. It's telling me that the method is not allowed because I'm sending a get request. But if I change this to post, and if I send it, now I get the result posted. So those are the basics of routing in Bottle. It's very simple and it's it's very easy to use, so if you're creating a simple site, getting the route set up will be pretty much the easiest part. You can do that very quickly. You can have placeholders, and then as you work on each individual page, you can fill in the function. But this works well. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about routing in Bottle, just leave me a comment down in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like my channel overall, please subscribe. So thanks for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.